Hi everyone, warm welcome and greetings from VAT. My name is Selin and I am the HR Business Partner for Corporate Services in British American Tobacco Malaysia. And I'm really happy to be here and to be a part of the overall Graduate Virtual Career Fair and this following webinar. So today we're really happy to host some of our global graduates to give everyone a quick flavor or a quick snapshot of what is it really like uh, to be working as a global graduate in VAT. So on the call, we have Ryan Dakib, 
Vivian as well as Daya from HR Marketing, Finance and Supply Chain respectively. So they'll be talking a little bit about their own experiences, some of the insights that they have working as a global graduate, the overall recruitment process, so on and so forth. So feel free to, you know, watch the entire webinar and to chat with us in the chat group. And we're, you know, we're happy to answer any questions and clarify any queries that you may have. Um, also, you know, please do follow Graduan as well as BHE's other social media websites such as BHE Careers. We are available on LinkedIn, Facebook, as well as Instagram. And please do visit our booth as well. We'll be there um, until 5 p.m. today and we'll be there on Monday and Tuesday as well. So do drop your CV at our booth if you're interested. Thank you and have a good day the rest of the fair. Ryan. Uh, today I have some of my GG colleagues with me who have recently graduated in the last couple of months. Uh, but those for those who are just tuning in, uh, let me just give a quick introduction about what the Global Graduate Program is. So the GG program is a one-year fast track management training program um, that exposes you to multiple functions within your selected uh, area of expertise. Uh, and you will go through rotations of about three months. Sometimes you may get exposures internationally. For example, Daya herself has uh, been to Singapore. And uh, at the end of it, you will graduate into a managerial position. Um, so other than that, the Global Graduate Program is a truly global program, right? At the end of it, you also get to meet a lot of the other GGs from other end markets. So it really is quite an exciting program. Uh, I have as I mentioned, three of my colleagues here, and today we'll be kind of just talking a little bit about our experiences in the GG program so far, you know, what has happened since we graduated. Uh, and right after this, I'm going to pass the mic on over to them for them to introduce themselves. Uh, quick caveat here, Daya, unfortunately, her camera is not working today, so she will be joining in through call. Yeah, and having said that, so I'll just pass it on over to Naki first. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, Ryan, sure. Okay, so... Currently, uh, I'm in marketing, uh, specifically Associate uh, Digital Activation Manager right now because I'm done with the program. Uh, so the field of study that I did previously when I was in university, I actually studied uh, civil engineering. Uh, I did it in Harry Ward. Um, both, uh, I did a training program, three years in Putrajaya and one year in Edinburgh. Uh, I joined, I literally joined like three, uh, three days after my graduation which was back in august and my hobbies well basically i play a lot of golf every day uh, every week i'll play at least once but due to the mco <laughs> okay cool thanks Nakib. um daya do you want to go next yeah no worries so hi everybody uh, my name is daya and uh i'm an operations gg sometimes referred to as a supply chain gg as well uh, I studied chemical engineering in university as well. I did it in the University of Manchester in the UK. Uh, very quickly, I decided that was not for me, which is why I'm currently in operations. Um, I joined in September 2019. Uh, I got the job offer three months before my graduation, so that was pretty sweet. Uh, hobbies wise, I'm pretty interested in photography. I love traveling as well, but thanks to COVID, I'm unable to do that this year. <laughs> Okay, very cool. Daya, Vivian, do you want to go next? Hi, um, yeah, um, I joined last year in April 2019 back in Australia. So that's where I was hired in a graduate career fair over there. I am currently in uh, finance, so I graduated this year in April and I'm now doing uh, an assistant corporate finance role. Um, what did I study? I actually was from a econometrics and finance background. So I never did accounting, but I am in finance, uh, essentially. Um, so my hobbies, I, I like night drives, uh, but because of COVID uh, and lockdown, I don't think that's possible right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think all of our hobbies are kind of stopped because of COVID. Um, yeah, so I guess it's my turn. So my name is Ryan, I'm a HRGG. I joined last year sometime in September. Uh, during university, I studied psychology and went on to do my master's in Leeds, um, also in psychology. 
Uh, and then after that, I took a gap year to kind of do my own thing, play music here and there. And then when I came back, I applied for uh, BAT and got this job. And I've just recently graduated, actually, into now a uh, project role under HR function, working on a project for the C region. Yeah, so I guess that's all of us. And um, now, just want to let you all know that for this session, we've been given a couple of questions to answer as GGs. And uh, I will be semi-moderating, but also be providing my own input uh, and kind of take part in a conversation organically. Uh, so let's get started. The first question is, how did you end up joining BAT? And what was your recruitment experience or process like? So who wants to volunteer and take on a question? OK, Nakib put his thumbs up. So I guess Nakib can go first. <laughs> All right, um, so how did I end up in BAT? Basically, I was at the um, Grad One Fair in London. Uh, so I was look, we were looking around, uh, ap applying everywhere. And then when I went to the BAT booth, I realized that it's the biggest booth there. It had chairs, love it. it had the virtual, uh, they showcased the virtual office and everything, which is fantastic. Um, in terms of the recruitment experience, I would say it's it's fairly different from uh, other companies. Reason being is because they don't start with the test, they start with the interview. So we had the interview session, then they, went, they, they don't really go to the uh, traditional methodology. So they went straight on to having the um, group discussion, internal discussion. So they, during the interview session, they really focus on how you really want to, you think as a leader and as well as a team player. And I think that's one of the key things, which is very, very different from some of the companies that I've interviewed as well during the right one. So yeah, that's it for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can relate. I mean, I'm sure all of us can relate. Also, we all went through similar, if not exactly the same recruitment process. Um, yeah, for me, it's exactly as Nakib said, the interview process came first uh, when I applied. Uh, I had a video interview first before I went into the assessment center. Um, but the assessment center with all the tests, maybe Vivian, you want to talk about how your experience in the assessment center was like? Um. My assessment center was right after the day because uh, my the graduate career fair was in Sydney. So I actually didn't think of going to the career fair that my friend wanted to go. So that's where I went. And then uh, at the time, I think the HRBP just briefly interviewed me. And then the next day she was like, oh, just come for assessment center. So I was like, oh, OK. So I went for the assessment center and there was like uh, two other candidates over there. And uh, we had an individual session. Uh, I think you were given about an hour and a half or two hours to, to, to read through and then come up with a proposal or something like that. And then we did a group group assessment uh, where I think we didn't have enough people. So we had other HR people as dummies over there. So, so you only had two people? Two it was other... two other candidates, so okay. including myself. So it wasn't, I'm not too sure how many people are supposed to be the assessment centre, but uh, mine because there was only the three of us, uh, there was two other dummy candidates uh, just to, to, to actually act as the, the other two roles during the actual role play. I see. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What was your experience like, Daya? So mine was actually quite different. It started off with the test, so like unlike Nakib's uh, experience. I had to do an English and math test, and then uh, I proceeded to a phone interview. I think that's where they gauge your personalities and stuff. And then I had the video call with the HR business partner. It was quite daunting, but I managed to pass because then I was invited to the assessment center in London. Um, so in the assessment center itself, similar to what Vivian said, there's one part presentation where I was supposed to pitch like a marketing plan for an imaginary company. So that was pretty daunting because I had zero marketing experience. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm sure you guys can relate as well. But like I didn't know what I was doing, but I did my best. And my presentation, I guess, was really, really strong because the second part of the assessment center was uh, the group discussion where there was six to eight people uh, and you were supposed to defend your company because of X, X factors and then uh, you try to reach a conclusion, you know, as a group. Uh, apparently, like, I, I got this tidbit quite uh, <laughs> much later in the fair itself, but they told me that the group discussion was really bad. So it was really good that I set a very good um, uh, impression in my presentation part. So that 
I think what you can take away from this is just try to make very good impressions wherever you can, because that can eventually end up saving you. Uh, and then after the assessment center, uh, a few of us were shortlisted, and then I had to go through a final interview with the director of uh, operations herself. Uh, so all in all, I managed to secure the job. Pretty proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, I think all of us here can be proud of ourselves that oh, we all managed to pass um, the assessment center because I'm sure it was quite difficult. Uh, but for those that are watching, um, you've hear you've heard quite different versions of the assessment center, but being from HR, let me paint what the objective picture looks like of the assessment process. So it starts off with a verbal uh, and numerical test that's done online. And then once you pass that, it goes into a phone interview. And then from there, it goes into a video interview typically, okay, with perhaps your HRBP. Uh, and from there, it then goes into the assessment center. And finally, if you do pass the assessment center, you have an interview with the functional director. So that's generally what the process looks like. Uh, however, you know, Nakib, Daya, and Vivian here, they all were in different countries at the time. So you may see different variations of how the assessment uh, or recruitment process looks like simply because of, you know, time zone limitations and, and whatnot and manpower restrictions. So, but generally the, the process I mentioned is how the recruitment process would look like. Um, what, what kind of drew all of you to BAT to apply or rather join BAT? I'm curious, actually. Oh, um, yeah, well, I, I, like I said, I, I wasn't intending to actually go for the career fair because I, I was planning to actually stay in Australia. And then uh, my friend was like, oh, let's, let's just go. So I was like, OK, let me just print some resumes. You know, I just walked into the booth. I'm like, oh, here's my resume. You know, I was just literally throwing at the different booth. And, and at that point of time, I was actually there for another reason. So I, was, I got offered for a different role in Malaysia for a different company. So I was there for a cocktail session. And the BAT's booth was there, so I was just like, here's my resume. And then I went through with the assessment center and interview, and then I got the role the week after. So uh, it wasn't planned. It, was, it just so happened, and, and BAT is, is a very good company, so that's why I thought maybe I should just come back. I saw you smiling, Nakib. Do you want to <laughs> give yeah, your I, I think I think for myself, um, it's similar to Vivian. Like, uh, frankly speaking, uh, I'm not so sure if you're going to cut this off or not, but initially there was no intention on applying for a BAT. Um, I was in Grado Fair, basically was to go for another assessment center, actually. Uh, then what happened was that uh, we, 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 there was, the Grado Fair was packed, so we, need, we wanted to sit down, so there was no chairs. So we sat down at uh, the <laughs> BAT booth. And then one of the managers comes in and starts uh, chatting with us and asking, like, he was explaining and he, he was so enthusiastic about how the BET experience is and the DG program is. And then halfway along the lines, he was like, you know, you guys should really apply and give it. And then I gave in my resume uh, in the next five minutes. I was told to go for the interview. Uh, we went for the interview and then the next day we did, we did the assessment. And I think because of the timing, the short time they have in uh, London itself, we were actually recruited. On, uh, they informed us that we got the role and etc. So I think I would say that I was lucky in a way uh, because honestly speaking, not everyone, you know, this kind of opportunity just knocks on your door kind of thing. So that was the that was exactly what happened to me. And when you said we, you mean I, right? Uh, yeah, I, I. <laughs> There was someone else with me, but yeah, yeah. I don't mention names. Okay. Uh, Daya? Uh, I'll jump in. Um, so I think I mentioned it before, right? I was doing chemical engineering. I had no interest of pursuing it as a career. I knew pretty early on. So I was pretty much laser focused on everything else that was somewhat related to it, but not really. So that's why BAT really jumped uh, to me because, it, uh, for example, like I'm an operations uh, GG, right? We have a supply chain rotation. We have a factory rotation. That's where my chemical engineering would come in helpful. We also have a planning hub rotation and we also have a field rotation. So like it was a very wholesome, uh, I would say like a, like a package that was very, very attractive to me. 
uh, compared to other operations positions that I was pursuing in other companies, they weren't as robust as this one. I felt like BAT was going to give me many opportunities to experience different parts of operations and allow me the freedom to pick and choose like what would I like to pursue in the future. Um, I think that's the best part uh, that BAT was offering. Yeah, I think it's also quite fast tracked other than it being quite robust. Uh, most management trainees are two years and for us kind of it's like one year and then you get a managerial position. Uh, so yeah, for, for all for those that of you that are tuning in and if you don't know, um, all of us here have more or less graduated into a managerial position. Um, so it really is quite quite a fast track um, program. Yeah. So moving on to the next bit, thanks guys for your insights. The next question is, what is the best part about being a GG and the GG program at BAT? So who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go. Okay, Daya, okay, <laughs> go ahead, shoot. Uh, because it sort of uh, just continues from what I've been saying before. So yeah, like yeah, I fair, said, fair. yeah, yeah, uh, so like, I did mention that the program was incredible in the sense that you get to experience everything. Uh, so I will not talk about that further, but I'd rather talk about the culture of BAT itself. Uh, me being in operations, I felt like my colleagues were a small, well, not really small, but like a family unit, you know. They accepted me pretty early on. Uh, everyone is really helpful. When you ask them questions, uh, when they do have the time, they will uh, help you out. Uh, and everybody just says, you know, if you don't know anything, just ask. And I think that's a, the main thing that you have to remember if you get into BAT, just ask questions if you're unsure of anything because somebody out there will help you. There's no point you flailing in the dark and like, I'm going to do everything by myself. Yes, that, that's good, but not yet. Like, take this opportunity to learn, ask a lot of questions. I think that would be the main thing. Um, and I'm fortunate enough to have uh, an incredible uh, group of people that I'm working with who also serve as like my second family somewhat, uh, because, you know, if, if I run into problems, I do vent to them. Not everybody gets this opportunity to vent to their colleagues, you know, so I, I think I'm very fortunate in that sense. Yeah, that, that's for me. Yeah, I, I think to add on to that, it's quite interesting regarding the asking questions because um, BAT, or at least in in with my line managers, they generally ask and encourage us to come with solutions first when you ask questions as well, uh, and don't just come in blindly because then at least you can yeah. learn from your own mistakes. Like if you do come with a solution and it's incorrect or it's maybe not the best way forward, then you do kind of learn something from the questions you ask as well, which helps to you know, kind of help you remember uh, things better. So yeah, yeah, that's true. Yep. Uh, Nakit, do you want to take the next uh, kind of go next? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, sure. So one thing about BAT, um, frankly, I mean, uh, being a GG in BAT, frankly speaking, is definitely like again, like what Daya said, is the culture. I think in terms of you know helping one another, I think BAT has that sorted out really well. So the coaches um, that actually guide you, your colleagues actually want to actually assist you. And they generally, one thing I really uh, like to emphasize, one thing that I've noticed in BAT is that everyone wants to see you grow. And you don't really see that often in, uh, in the outside world. And at the same time, I would really, really say is that the level of accountability that the company gives you as a graduate, uh, I think it's huge. It's a big thing. And I think it's the best way for you to learn. Your one thing about BAT is that the managers will be giving you the accountability that you want. So you'll be responsible for the actions that you, you do afterwards. So let's say if the project goes well, good, very good. You get the, uh, you get the rewards and et cetera. But however, if something goes bad, you need to learn how to step up and how to improve yourself. And at the same time, you have to find a solution to the problems that you have actually caused eventually. So I think the level of accountability is definitely something the best way for you to actually learn in the long term. Uh, long term. And yeah, I think that's one of the key things which I felt that in BAT, you don't get it as elsewhere. Yeah, I think to that point also, right, with accountability, the projects that they give are quite impactful, right? It's not kind of like they just give you some random thing to do and there's no impact kind of thing. They really are high impact, you know, and, and there are serious outcomes that comes from these projects. So I, I completely agree. 
Um, Vivian, do you want to take the next? Mm, I think BAT for me, uh, the biggest thing I've learned so far is that um, BAT teaches you how to be very solution driven. So like what Daya said, um, just building on onto that point that uh, it really pushes you to actually bring a solution to the table. I like what you've mentioned as well. Um, how to be flexible with your um, ideas and your and your solutions as well. So and also to how do we be more resourceful in the sense that um, this is the things that they really build onto you and to make sure that you you progress. So looking back like one year ago when I first joined BAT, I, I, I am surprised at how much I've grown to become uh, this person where I am today, more resilient, more resourceful, uh, getting better at giving solutions as well, as well as uh, coming up with ideas to actually solve a problem. So I think that's really important because I don't really think you get this uh, this exposure as much as you get in, in BAT. Um, people, obviously very, very helpful. The culture, uh, everyone's very close knit. Uh, everyone is always uh, on the same wavelength and same page as well. So it's very easy to actually communicate with people. And it also gives you the opportunity to communicate with people outside of uh, the BAT Malaysia world. So I normally what I, I always talk to people from like Chile, Sri Lanka, Singapore. So it's it's a very, um, it's an exposure that you will not really get uh, outside. I'm not too sure. Unfortunately, I haven't been to any other companies, but this is speaking for what I have in BAT experience and what I can experience is, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I completely agree as well. And on top of, you know, having this kind of people exposure and being trained to give your own solutions and all that, uh, that is especially true even if you are a GG and a fresh grad joining BAT. It's not just a culture across the board for, you know, all the grades and all the functions. It's something that is expected of a GG as well in order to succeed. And I think that's the best part. A lot of expectations are kind of put on us and it may be difficult seeing as how most of us, if not all of us, transitioned directly out of university into a really hard hitting program. Um, but I guess for me, the best part is kind of the lessons that you do get out of it. So, you know, learning to give your own solutions, to think outside the box and being outspoken, kind of not afraid to give your own ideas, even if they are crappy ones. Um, sorry, yeah. Vivian, did you want to add? Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to add on a point as well. Um, it's also that the accountability on us is, is pretty high. Your yeah. projects gets known by the directors, yep. if not the yep. regional directors, which yep. I believe um, it's not very common in the outside yep. uh, world because BAT really shapes you to be the next generation leader per se, yep. uh, to actually get you the exposure to the directors of the company essentially. Yeah, and exposure is the name of the game, right? For, for GGs, it really is about, all the spotlight is kind of on you and you're expected to deliver. And if not, well, let's not talk about that. <laughs> so let's move on straight into uh, the next question. So what was the most challenging part about the GG program? So uh, Nakib smiling again, maybe you want to go first, Nakib? <laughs> I mean, uh... I have to be honest, um, it's, a, it's a tough program. Uh, it's not meant for everyone, but I think it's the best platform for you to learn and grow. Um, one thing about the, the most challenging thing about the program is that it's, because usually management trainings, uh, if a management training is about like two years program, right? And ours is, you know, it's scaled down to only a year. You know, it's good, you know, you, you finish quick and everything, but the expectations is different as well. Um, you're only given three months to learn, create a, a new, uh, find a solution to a problem that you've, you're currently working on kind of thing. And, and that's the thing which really push you even further. And I would say that um, being in the program, each rotation would definitely, uh, it would definitely stretch you out. You know, it would push you to your limit. And if you're not up for it, it might be fairly difficult. But let's say if you push it through, I think the rewards and the satisfaction action that you get after the uh, completion of each rotation, I think it's amazing. Um, frankly speaking, it's it's really dialed down 
want to train you on how you're going to react to certain problems and react to certain solutions. Because one thing I've noticed in BAT is that you're going to be rotated around often. You know, even after you pass the uh, program, even if you're, you know, in a mid-career, higher and everything, you're not going to be stationed in one particular role. You will be exposed everywhere. And one thing, especially for the GGs, they want you to be able to actually be good at almost everything um, and I think that's that's what makes a very good leader in the long run and yeah that's it for me yeah I I, I completely agree as well the the whole bit about you know being it um, high pressure fast paced every rotation you kind of need to deliver that is so true and with the bit about mid-career hires as well that is also true um, whether you're a mid-career hire or if you join as a GG and progress through your career you will never be stationary ever right we've had GGs who joined um, who have ended up in Japan or ended up in Singapore so it really is a company that values the development of their talents uh, and they will put their people first in terms of making sure they get the exposure that they need. Um, Daya, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. So um, I think, uh, um, you know, when I first entered as a GG right, into BAT, they first let you sit through one-on-one -on -one meetings with each of the directors. I was really surprised by that. I didn't understand, like, the brevity of the whole program. You know, I didn't understand how much visibility you would get as a GG. Um, you, you do get a lot of visibility from the directors, which I don't think you can get from any other company. Again, uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, could be... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, and, you know, for example, right, um, I've just completed my GG program and currently my landing role is uh, as an innovation and improvement manager and I'm reporting directly to the director. Like, I don't know if this is incredibly daunting and I am so thankful for this experience. It gives you a lot of visibility and direct coaching as well from the directors. And, you know, what, what more can you want, right? Um, and also, I wanted to say to those of you who are out there who are worried, you know, I don't have any internship experience, how am I going to secure a job? I come from no internship experience whatsoever. So trust me, it is possible to get a job in the end. You know, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure your CVs, are, uh, you know, you, you, you can back it up with your CVs, you back your people skills or any other skills that you have, that, that would be great. You don't necessarily need an internship, but if you have that, that's a huge plus. Um, so for me, jumping straight into a corporate environment like this, it did take some uh, somewhat like a transition period. Um, I didn't really know how to operate in a corporate world, so that, that took some time to get into, but um, you know, I think at the end of the day, I've grown so much. I thought my limit was at 100, but now I'm like at a, at a thousand. So I think it really pushes you to continuously grow like and, and become more resilient, like what uh, Vivian said earlier. Yeah, that's for me. Very cool. Um, Vivian? Yeah, so I completely agree with Daya. So I, I too didn't have a internship experience. I actually just literally had a, a retail job in Australia and then I came back to, to do this. It's a complete different environment. Uh, it took some time to get used to it as well. Uh, it took me a while uh, to actually learn the baby steps of being in the corporate world and also the financial skills because my finance GG uh, wasn't very well worth with like all these uh, accounting terms as well as like all the systems. Uh, so it kind of took a bit of a time to get used to. After that, you sort of gain momentum. Um, but what is the most challenging part? I would like describe the GG program for me as a uh, pressure cooker. So they literally put you in, in terms, uh, they literally give you a lot of, um, not pressure, but uh, it's it's more of um, it's your projects. Pressure. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's yeah, your it projects, etc. That, that like really, you feel pressure. like, sometimes I feel like, oh my God, Am I supposed to do this? Am I even supposed to run this project? It, it feels like it's too big. It feels too overwhelming. It can feel overwhelming at times. And, and it, and I'm not going to lie, a lot of times that I did break down a little bit. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to quit. I, I can't do this anymore. It, it's, it's, it's really pushes you to the limit. If you think your limit is 100, yeah. Like Daya said, your limit is probably 1,000 to be 80. 
and that's what makes you stronger and, and that's what makes you grow even faster than anybody else. I would guarantee that. Over a year, you, you would see yourself grow tremendously in all your leadership qualities and, and how you actually present, how you, how you, it's not only your hard skills, but soft skills as well, I would say. So yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, what comes up out of a pressure cooker is something good, right? You always get a good stew, a good curry or whatever that you put into your, I don't have stop a pressure cooker, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it's lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, I, not, sorry guys, yeah. none of us have had lunch yet. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, um, that's yeah. what I feel. I think to both um, you and Daya's point, right, regarding the, you know, lack of internship experience or a lack of solid kind of um, hard knowledge in terms of your finance. Uh, one thing that's really good about the recruitment process at BAT is that um, the assessment center is meant to be an objective kind of measure of your potential. So they don't for example, I went through the same assessment center as Daya, Nakib, and Vivian, and um, the questions that they were asking or tests that they were giving me were heavily marketing centric or supply chain oriented. And I ended up joining as the HRGG. So it's not really so much about the hard skills or your kind of internship experience. It's really about your potential um, to be a future leader at BAT, as well as you know what you're really capable of underneath. So those those are things that BAT kind of looks out for. Um, yeah, but just keep your CV up to date, kind yeah. of mentioned. And just to add, my assessment center was nothing finance-based. Everything yeah. was marketing. So it basically a test of uh, your problem-solving skills and how how you actually think out of the box. Yep. It, you don't need to have any sort of uh, hard skills that you learn from uni to actually join BAT as a global graduate, per yep. se. Yep. Yeah. So it yeah, as Vivian mentioned, it is about th that problem solving skills. Sorry, Daya, did you want to mention something? Yeah, I mean basically, right? You learn on the job a lot. Yes, you really right? do. That's, That's the so main true. thing. Yeah. So yeah. when you come in, don't worry about what skills you have or anything. Just yeah. come in with an open mind, uh, show your potential, and yeah. then you can learn on the job. Yeah. Once you uh, a blank canvas, really. Yeah. Like, I would. Most say, importantly. I guess Sorry. it's your will to learn. If you're yes. willing to learn and, and you have the curiosity, just keep the curiosity up and yeah. ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that kind of ties into to my response to the uh, biggest challenges at BAT. You know, coming in um, with a psychology degree and doing an org psych master's, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm ready to put all this kind of uni knowledge to work. Let's get to work, you know. But when you come in, it's just like, nope, none of this is going to work in a corporate setting. So you just got to, you know, push the reset button and and kind of be open to learn and stay humble, but stay confident. So that's kind of the, the two things about it in terms of really what the most challenging bit was uh, adaptability for me, adaptability and flexibility. There will be plenty of times where things are constantly gonna be thrown at you or things need to change. A very good example was when I was planning for the career fair in the UK and then COVID kind of hit, and then we had to kind of adapt and, and change um, how we want to approach the whole situation. So that, that really is just, one element, but understandably that is an external factor. Uh, however, things like that change all the time and it happens all the time at BAT. So an important element about being a GG is really to be adaptable and flexible. Uh, so having to learn that skill was probably one of the biggest challenge for me. Okay, so having said that, let's go to the last bit of our you know, call. And the question is, what were the biggest lessons you have learned from the GG program? And why should those that are watching us choose to join BAT as well as GG? So, hmm. Daya, do you want to go first? Yeah, I could. Yep, yep. Um, so, what are the biggest lessons? I think you just have to learn how to work better amidst ambiguity. You know, sometimes you will be thrown into projects where you are like, well, I'm not sure what is happening. But you just have to try your best to, you know, ask a lot of questions, also come with solutions, and just be resourceful to understand what you are expected of. I think it's quite important in the beginning to just clear the expectations with your coach or manager and and then you can work through your work. But I think for me, especially like um, 
when I'm thrown into certain projects, I actually don't know what is happening. So I think it's very important to keep your cool when, when you know, amidst ambiguity, like I said before. Um, I think another big part of it is also one of the biggest lessons is the importance of being resilient. Sometimes you will be tested. You will have a lot of workload uh, and it will keep on adding and you won't see the end. And you, you might think to yourself, you know, like, oh, my God, can I even do this? I'm at my breaking point. Uh, I want to quit. That is very normal. I think all of us have had the thought before. I've I've had that thought. I mean, dare I say, like, not, not something we want to tell you. <laughs> fresh but, but honestly, um, but my point is right. Even after having these thoughts, right, it at the end of the day, you will find a way. You you will solve that problem, and that is a testament to your ability. You know. That's um, a very important point to make that you didn't quit in the end. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, here, none yeah. of us did. So. <laughs> Um, and also the point that Ryan mentioned earlier about being um, adaptable and flexible. I, I'd just like to give you one example, right? When I was on my uh, placement in Singapore with the planning hub, I was tasked to, to do a project on a whole new software that I had no experience in, uh, which means I had to learn it from scratch. And then the CB was announced. So th there was a lockdown and then I had to work from Circuit home. Circuit breaker, right? Yeah, yeah. For those breaker. that don't know, CB <laughs> is circuit right. breaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had to work from home, which means I had to work from my hotel room, staring at the same four walls every single day. Um, thank God I had my Netflix, or else I would go crazy. You know, it, it's not very easy, but. I I think that is a no-brainer in BAT, you know, no matter where you go, you, you'll always be learning something new. Um, for example, like how I am in my current role, I'm in digital uh, uh, activation. It's entirely a whole new world for me. You know, digital is a new platform for myself. I had nothing, I can't even log into my Instagram sometimes. Um, I struggle with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the reality. And I think um, one key thing is that um, they really want you to learn. They really want you to expand your knowledge. They want you to be good, you know, at almost everything. So if there is an opportunity for you to improve your area of improvements, they'll send you there. They'll try their level best to go uh, by any means to for you to develop yourself. And I think that's one of the biggest uh, reasons why you should actually consider joining the program is because they really want to genuinely develop you as a person. Because at the end of the day, all the graduates, um, in the program, you know, you're going to be the future leaders of the company. You're going to be progressing forward in your career if you uh, choose to remain in BAT in the long term. And I think that is the one biggest, you know, I would say biggest nugget on being with the program. And I don't think um, people would actually see it otherwise. Even people in the company, they will see you as a talent. And I think that's the biggest uh, winning point here. Yeah, yeah I completely I agree. Guess. I mean, so politically correct, right? No, <laughs> no, it's not politically correct. It's the truth, Nakib. <laughs> Go, Vivian. It's true. It's true. The company sees you as a talent, which is um quite. It's quite interesting, right? Like which company sees you as a talent? Oh, I'm a talent. <laughs> I didn't even know I was uh, talented to begin with. 
Uh, but I guess one of my biggest takeaway from being a GG over that one year of, I would say, an accelerated growth. When I mean accelerated, meaning like you step from a zero to a hundred straight away, like kind of thing. Like you sort of, they brush you up on your business acumen. I mean, obviously, your strategic thinking skills. How do you be more strategic in, in, in thinking and out of the box, essentially? How to manage your stakeholders, which is very important because, you know, you always need to uh, be good at stakeholder management to, to, to solve your problems, essentially. Uh, how to be very resilient. And I mean, like, it's like taking a rubber band and like, like stretching it and then and going back to like normal. <laughs> um, building on to your leadership and confidence skills as well as, um, you know, being more sharp and uh, impactful in your presentation. Uh, I would say when I first joined as a GG, I had terrible slides. My, my slide skills were so bad that my my manager wanted to... Right? Yeah, my PowerPoint slide was so bad that my manager wanted to buff, essentially. Uh, I, I, over time, I sort of improved uh, a lot. I, I would safely say she now actually think my slides is good. So that's actually a very good point. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's always a, a journey of learning and journey of growth and our learning doesn't even stop here uh, over after a year so you, you you continue to learn something new every day and at BAT and it's that's I guess it's the most important thing in the world because we continue to improve ourselves for the, the better version of ourselves for the future um but yeah I think if there is a program that is uh that I would I wouldn't regret joining BAT per se because it is a, a year of a very challenging but very rewarding uh, and it's where we are today as well. Yeah, I think rewarding is, uh, you hit the nail right on the head with rewarding because PAT does uh, compensate its GGs very well. So if, you, if, if nothing else, compensation is one good reason to join PAT. Yeah. But uh, jokes aside, uh, I'd like to refer to what Nakit just put on his neck. So that is a lanyard for uh, the Grad Academy. Right? Oh. So, <laughs> so usually what happens at the end of the program if you graduate is that you get to go to London uh, and meet up with all the other global graduates from all the different end markets. So from, you know, from Pakistan to Bangladesh to the US, Italy. So all over the world you have GGs and you will get that exposure and kind of to meet up with all these other global graduates. However, unfortunately, this year there was COVID. So we recently did ours virtually. Uh, so, I mean, uh, well, what, what do I say? What can I even say? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, Rona? I mean, I, I think to be fair, that is beyond the company. Yeah, you know? yeah it is beyond yeah. the company's control. Yeah. That is true. I mean, uh, we're not going to mask it and say that we are not disappointed obviously all of us here wanted an all expense paid trip to the uk to kind of go uh -huh. for the grad to, again, london. to london uh, where our global hq is based however the uh, virtual grad academy experience uh turned out quite okay it, it went pretty well i think we still did get that kind of networking element and the leadership training sessions were still uh quite good so i, I wouldn't say that it's it, it's all dark but unfortunately the covid has made things this way and that's that's just the way it is it is what it is as nakib likes to say why are you wearing a tag, tag at home by the way nakib I just wanted to show her. Yeah, I, I saw it was just next to me. I was in like, true oh, marketing I fashion. In true in marketing true. fashion. Yeah, I got to promote, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Um. so I think I, I won't add any more in terms of the biggest lessons. I think my colleagues here have all uh, made very good points in terms of needing to be adaptable, uh, with Nakib, how each of his rotations were different. It's the same for me. Every rotation I did was completely different from the previous one. And even my landing role is just completely new. So you got to learn everything from scratch again. Uh, but yeah, it is the name of the game, right? Yeah. Change, change is constant. And you just got to be quick and fast to pick up. You yeah, want sorry. to add, right? Um, I think uh, BAT actually... Uh, I'm not too sure about other grad uh, programs, unfortunately, but you know, all of us actually went to the field uh, for yeah. a month or two. So it, it's actually going down to the grounds of how to sell and yeah. how to how to actually communicate with your customers and your yeah. consumers. 
which is very important because you need to really know the foundation of the business to be able to lead the business. Yeah. Which, um, yeah, I don't really see it very apparent in other grad programs, but yeah. unfortunately, I've never tried, so I can't be the testament of it. But yeah. Yep, it's true. Um, that that rotation is really like it's no joke when we say that everything is new each time you rotate to a different yeah. uh, rotation. It's a very eye-opening experience, yeah. I would say. Okay, guys, um, that's it for our time. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but thank you all for tuning in. I do believe there will be a chat section for all those that want to ask questions, and we do have moderators that will be on standby that will kind of answer your questions throughout the day. So please do leave your questions there if you have any. Uh, and with that, I'd like to leave it over to to you guys to take away, you know, what you want from this session. And that's it from us. Bye, guys. Thanks, Nakib, Dai, and Vivian for for doing this session. Say bye, bye as well. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>